With me today, I've got Neil, and Neil is a business development manager from Walter. Neil, welcome. Thank you, thanks for the invite. Walter are a cutting tool manufacturer based over in Germany, and they have been going for about 100 years now, can I write? Over 100 years, yeah. Uh, a little longer than what our partnership is. I think we've we've been partners for about 18 months now. We have, yes. Uh, uh, quite new. Just, yeah, quite new. Do you want to give a, a bit of an overview of how we've become partners? Well, early days, it, uh, there was obviously a, an approach from MSC and we saw a lot of things aligned with our own vision. Um, so we go to market uh, a brand promise engineering competence and that's uh, really um, making the tools work in an optimum condition. So the engineering side is designing manufacturer tools, the competence side is making those tools do the, uh, work at the best rate they can. So uh, with that, we're very customer oriented. Um, we do a lot with um, our technical solutions on our, on our own technology center. Uh, so we saw a lot of alignment. So you've got your own technology center, you have engineering people. So is it fair to say that Walter base themselves on having this engineering credibility or competence, and you saw the same in what MSC was offering as an engineering. That's that's pretty much it. It, it aligns. So we've got the same ideals. So therefore, we work into the same principles, and and it, it should develop into a very good partnership on that basis. I think it works in the in the way that we're we're partnered up in the fact that we offer a solution led yep. sale rather than a box swap. Yep. And it's getting to the understanding of what the customer truly wants. Well, the solutions, what the customer wants. Uh, we work on a thing now, you know, try and win the part, not just the not just the tool. So we're looking at a broader picture when we look at the application of tools. Um, if the customer identifies a problem, he's looking to solve that, but what else can be improved at the same time? So does that, does that mean you have to look at the whole method of manufacture then if you're trying to win the whole part? Well, we, you look you look beyond just the application that you perhaps were first uh, you were first investigating. So, um, as everything can be improved in some way uh, at some stage, and it's uh, it's really just sort of having the mindset to sort of look at the bigger picture, make a bigger recommendation, and perhaps just look at what one tool can do. Uh, now, at the start, I've mentioned about Walter has been around for about a hundred years. Do you want to just give us a bit of information about all started? Yep, founded in 1919 uh, by Richard Walter. So he set the company rolling and uh, obviously a lot of development over the years from what cutting tools were like in those days. The main part of it, Walter are very strong in indexable milling. And so that's where the main development with Walter was. And various grades, coated carbides came into that. And, and then we got to about the turn of the century and there was a big focus on uh, improving through uh, coding technology and developments in that area. Pretty much at the same time, we acquired Titex and Prototip. Uh, again, two very strong companies in their own right, uh, over 100 years old. Uh, they came into the fold, and that gave Walter then a vast array of solid round tools to add to the indexable portfolio that was already there. So from that, we've now developed a full turning program with uh, grooving attached to it. So we're really active in all disciplines of milling, turning, grooving, threading, and drilling. You mentioned it just about the indexable milling. That has got to make you shine in some sector. Very strong um, with, the, with the indexable milling. Uh, the big target, automotive, because of volume. And, uh, and that's been the mainstay. And that is basically the the base of the company is all being founded on automotive manufacturing. Well, you know, with the acquisition of uh, Titex and Protip, yep. has that opened up doors into other sectors for yourselves? Well, it gives you more applications to look at because they're obviously they're smaller tools. Uh, so where you're just fixed on a, the face milling, shoulder milling, we're now looking at hole making. Just about every part that goes through a machining center has a hole in it. So you're now looking at the hole making aspect of it, threading, and then the smaller milling tools as well. So a lot more scope for um, additional features. And you get the pull through from both products. So you've got the indexable milling side, will drag through the, the smaller tools uh, for other applications and vice versa. Where we've applied, uh, or where Titex Prototype have been present, they can now pull in the indexable tools. And do you do your own coatings as well? So coatings is a big thing that Walder has. Uh, that is the focus right now. It's a crown jewels, if you like. Yeah. 
It was around about the year 2000, there was a big step change. Um, our whole coated carbide area is um, a base of aluminium oxide and titanium carbon nitride. And it's manipulating those coating materials. So the common coating materials recognized for a lot of years, okay. but they're quite, uh, they're, they're quite rough. They're, they're surface wise, rough textured. And it's really the refinement now and manipulation of those coatings to bring you something else to develop different characteristics into the carbide that you get. So where we run a 10, typically a 10, a 20, a 30 grade in turning, right. the wear resistance is from the coating materials and what they can do for you. But then the structure of them, uh, the change in that gives you better toughness characteristics. So you can really use that carbide outside what you normally see as a 10, a 20, a 30. It has a lot more application capability than it, the number would suggest. So when you talk about the structure of the coating, what, uh, how small are we going down here to oh, it's, here? it's beyond anything I can describe to you, but it's uh, essentially, um, there's, there's processes, there's, um, there's, there's mechanical processes, and uh, the first step was to remove, because you've got dissimilar metals, you get uh, tensile stresses created in the mm -hmm. heat up, cool down situation. So it's changing that to compressive stresses, and, and then we found a way of really to manipulate that. And then you get into the crystals within the coating and the alignment of the crystals. They're very randomly placed in the past. So now you have capability where you can control the size, but then you lose alignment. So if then you try and control the alignment, you get different sizes, crystals come in. So now it's gone past that, and we're able to control that more to a much more uniform process of size and alignment of the crystals within the coating. And what does that, what does all this mean for the tool? Then if you make everything uniform? Well, if it's uniform, it makes it, uh, it makes it behave better. As I said earlier, um, better wear characteristics come from the, 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 the coating. There's less heat generation and you get, you get better strength from the carbide. So you're getting sort of toughness capability and wear resistance capability enhanced as you develop. And now we're bringing in more cutting tool material, coating materials, to go into that same sort of process. So it's a continuous thing now to, to develop in this area and bring in new materials that'll enhance the, uh, the mainly tool life and performance of the carbide. Uh, we, could, we can't talk about all these tools, Neil, without mentioning the, the Tiger Tech. Yep. So uh, do you want to just give us an overview of Tiger Tech? So Tiger Tech is um, our uh, insert brand. Um, gold and black was the color of the inserts uh, when, when it first happened in the year 2000. So exposing the, uh, the black layer on, on, on the top, which is the aluminum oxide essentially. So the two platforms I said earlier, titanium carbon nitride is, is used for uh, abrasive, to resist abrasive, abrasive wear, aluminum oxide for, um, to resist crater wear. So they have different uh, characteristics in them. So it's smoothing that out. So um, post-coat treatment processes come into it, smoothing out all the time, uh, developing. So a big step change in the year 2000, and uh, I was witness to it, um, that uh, the basically a significant increase in performance of these tools, both from a speed capability, cutting uh, speed capability, and a tool life uh, capability. And from there, we've gone on to uh, Tiger Tech Silver, which is the next generation. Now we're on third generation of Tiger Tech Gold. Still based on the titanium carbon nitride aluminum oxide theme for the coating materials, but now much higher capability. So is, it, is the insert still this, this dual color, gold and black? Well, we've got it all, black, all gold now. So we've been through that. There's quite a bit of the industry went for gold and black inserts as well, which is... Uh, which is, was, there, is there a specific reason for that, by the way? Uh, well, we just exposed it because it's part of this. It's part of the smoothing process. So, oh. if you want the top surface uh, smooth, then you have to get down to the layer that's, that, that you're looking for the smoothest from. The outer layer, really, the goal is a uh, is a, a decor layer. They call it, but it's it's non-functional. It's purely there to observe wear, mm. so you can see the wear line better. So the the gold side of it detects wear. And, and you know, you, you've probably heard yourself, if somebody comes out with a black insert, nobody really likes it. Yeah. So, so the gold insert was there. They, we then changed it to silver, to just a bit of a distinction on the product. And now we're back to all gold. So that the, the, the dual color process is gone because the, the coating again is, is different. The outer layer, the things they can do to it, it's, it's there for a different reason. And what sort of materials can you cut? The target area initially was uh, steel and cast iron. So the ISO P, ISO K area 
and uh, and it moved on and then in around about 2008 we came out with the pvd uh, aluminium oxide which was a world's first and we think it still is the only we're the only manufacturer that has pvd aluminium oxide in the range uh, pvd gives a very sharp edge or allows you to create a sharper edge and that gives us then the access to the stainless steels high temperature alloys and that now has become a big a big theme for ourselves is uh, is really uh, penetrating the aerospace market. Oh, is, is that in both milling and turning for those materials? It is, yes. So we've we started with the milling and then uh, we've moved around. Turning followed the milling. And, and again, it's the same theme we developed for, for the milling side of it. Uh, the, the turning program in the third generation came out only uh, a, a year and a half, two years ago. Talking of turning, I know we've got some uh, demos lined up and some tests run with our engineers, yep. which we're working on in the background. Do you want to give us uh, some information on that? Yes, so um, again, comes uh, on the training theme and, and awareness. Uh, so we're setting up the demo with the technology center utilizing the, again the, the partnership capability. Uh, there's a, quite an in-depth um, piece, generic part that's been, that will show off uh, quite a few of the cutting tools on the turning side. And with that, we'll, we'll demonstrate the capability with the coating that's on there and, and a, range of, a range of the geometries um, to show you know, how we change things, how we can change things for a, a better performance. And to finish it off, I think it's, uh, it's exciting to say that we, you, we're going to get you back in after those live trials with our engineers to do some milling and put your milling tools through the test. Yeah, it's a big, it's a, obviously it's core product, so milling's very attractive to us. Uh, so later in the year, we'll, we'll get into it with the uh, Extra Tech XT range that we have. Again, the Tiger Gold theme um, on the inserts, and the, they'll We'll, we'll pick off the, the primary grades for whatever material we decide to cut. With that, we'll bring in the smaller tools as well, the round tools. So we've got Ziltec, which is a, a family of um, a solid carbide end mills. And then we'll throw in the thread mill and the drilling that, that, uh, that comes along with it as well. As always, a wealth of knowledge from yourself. I can't wait to get those cutters on the machines, get that swarf flying and seeing what the tooling is really capable of. Thank you for coming in. It's a pleasure as always as having you and I can't wait to get you back in. Thanks, Matt.